So I'm sitting with Steve Lazar, designer, builder extraordinaire. Uh, why don't you just tell us uh, the name of your company? Why don't you share that? Here in Southern California, we work as Design Plus Build by Lazar. And we also work in Park City as Lux Modern Mountain Homes. Wow, two beautiful places, Park City and Manhattan Beach, amazing. I wanna take you back a, a little bit on this house. When you were first commissioned to come out and figure out what to put here, this lot's extraordinary, right? We're so used to these 30 foot wide lots, you got 42 feet wide in the back. What's the first thought you had when you saw those dimensions and this location? Well, just as you said, the idea that it was a bigger than average lot and the fact that instead of a straight lot, it had an odd dimension in the front versus in the back immediately says, oh wow, we can capture a lot more depth to this house instead of it just being a wide bowling alley. You know, typically you wanna just stuff as much space into a, a lot of this size to account for the fact that property here is very expensive. Right. But now that we have an odd shaped lot, we could do both. We could fit in approximately 6,000 feet, but at the same time along the west side where the front entry is, we could have absolute dimension so that as you're approaching the house, there's a lot more to it than just you're between two homes. Exactly. You know, I think the challenge with a lot of the 30 by 90 lots is the limitation of of freedom and space when you're looking out. This, uh, this view looking out this way must have captured your excitement when you saw that and how you would showcase the design. So what went into mind when you were like, okay, I gotta lay this floor plan out. How do I take advantage of it? Where, where did your head go with that? Well, that's, that's a great point of view. I mean, you have to take advantage of the vastness. It's not only elevated and there's Catalina, Palos Verdes, of course, the ocean in the background, but you also have this enormous vista of, of the hill section. You, you can actually see landmarks in East Manhattan. So the fact that we're elevated so high means that you have the ability to capture so much. So the whole front of the house was like, okay, Let's make there be nothing in the way. We'll have pass-through window, we'll have grand open doors. And Pavlina, the owner, even said, I don't care what it takes. I don't want a post. In, in, in the in view, in the front corner, yeah, like you do whatever it takes to architecturally or engineering wise or whatever, you make it so there is no post. And what's strange is people don't notice that there's no post. However, if there was a post, they'd all be complaining. It would be so obvious. Yeah. It would be so you know, obvious. That brings up a good point. I know you collaborated with Pavlina on this project and you and, and many others are often doing what we call spec projects. And I know with spec projects, part of the goal is to build something beautiful, but control costs. How did this project differ in, in that regards when you started on this project? Well, that's a great question because it started out with what we knew between the two of us at the time when we began the project. As the project's being built and we recognize, oh, there's an option to do this. Oh, we could do this. Oh, we could do this. Then inevitably the homeowner drives those decisions. Right. So we did go considerably over her original budget I don't know if 20% over budget is unheard of, but it's, it's reasonable. It's a lot. Oh no, it's a lot. I mean, yeah. we certainly put a lot more money into this house had I done it in my previous life with Leo and it was a spec home. Yeah. He would have said, no, we're gonna limit it to this and that's what, what we're gonna you know, set it out with. Um, Pavlina's taste and um, revisions and her her ideas were spectacular, and because it was a house for her, it was like, no issue. Amazing collaboration. And I know, Steve, you're known for really architecturally distinct homes, some real landmarks throughout the South Bay. And as I walked around this house on the outside, 
I noticed something I don't often see, right? You have elevations everywhere. Um, what was your thought behind that? Because most homes are just straight boxes on these lots and you have a lot going on around this one. Well, thank you for noticing that. Again, a house is much more than just a place for you to live. When you walk home, when you walk by your home, when guests come to see your home, a house is a statement and the more that I can create life to the house, the more interesting it becomes. Uh, it's not very easy on the 30 by 60 lots or right. 30 by 90 lots, but when you have a little bit of extra width, it's very easy to take advantage of it. Um, it just brings dimension. It's really, it's what it is, is, is the more dimension, and dimension comes from negative space. So if you were to just take a box, yeah. it's the more you cut away from that box, or it's, it's how you deal with the, the basic clump of clay, and then when you cut away at it, it brings dimension, and the more that you can bring dimension to it without hurting its usability, that's how it works. Now, the other thing you, pulled off amazingly, and you do it a lot, is somehow finding ways to bring in natural light throughout the entire home. Explain, explain your thought process behind that, how you made that happen. I mean, even the lower level, below grade, lights up with sunshine. Well, thank you for noticing that. I mean, it's critical that light is kind of uh, a driving force in our lifetime. So the more that we can bring light in and still retain some, some semblance of privacy is kind of very important. Um, I do use interior windows. I do use um, glass floors. I do a lot of things that will help implement light into the house. And then down on the, on the basement level, um, even the planning department at the city of Manhattan Beach referred to this house as the house with a moat around it. So it is the only house in Manhattan Beach with a moat. <laughs> yes. So on on roughly over 50 percent of the entire basement area is um, open space, and it's always the 50 percent that gets the more action from the sun. It's directly on the south side. It's directly on the west side. So as the trajectory of the sun moves, it's always lighting the downstairs, which does give the downstairs a bit of a magical feel. And when the sun is done doing its thing, we've uplit the entire basement area with the foliage so that even at nighttime, it might even create an even better feeling. This is by far the best landscape job I've seen on a home that's coming for sale, that's never been lived in. Was this uh, you, was it Pavlina? What, did you hire a landscape genius or what happened there? Um, it was a collaboration, Pavlina yeah. and I. She said, this is, this is what I'm looking for. And then Don, who's the gentleman who I've worked with a lot in the past, um, interpreted and understood what we wanted. And we did put some, I think we have six 36-inch um, trees, 36-inch potted trees. Okay, that's a crane. <laughs> we have six of them on a basement level. And, and in doing that, we've connected the ground level to the second level so that by bringing in fully mature landscape, right. we've already grounded the house right into the dirt so that even though it's brand new, it seems as though it's been here for years. Yeah, it's incredible. So, you know, back to the lot size, being this extra width, you have 42 feet in width. How do you take advantage of that with this house? Well, in the sand section, as we all know in Manhattan Beach, parking can become a real issue. It's a nightmare. Yeah. Yes. So because we had extra space in the back, we were able to not only take advantage of the back architecturally because the house is much wider, but we also found ourselves being able to put not only three car parking side by side, but we also took the back elevation of the house and pushed it forward a couple of extra feet. So now we can get two car parallel parking 
behind so five car off street five car off street parking in the sand section is absolutely unheard of yeah and not only that you have the benefit of the school that closed at three o'clock and i assume you're just allowed to park there after three o'clock if you have guests we oftentimes park there when we were allowed to we have a nice um cul-de-sac street right in front of us oftentimes we parked right on the street in front of the job because places open up during work when we leave people come in and park for overnight next day spots were open again so considering we had limited access to the house we actually did very well you know as a builder designer of this home you must have spent half your life here the last couple of years how did you find this location as far as utilizing what manhattan beach has the off has to offer going to lunch or, or whatever. How did you feel about this location being here, hanging out this period of time? Well, it's a, it's a special place because you not only have easy proximity to places to eat and get water and you know Gatorade and whatnot, but the idea that you can have this big a house with this kind of vista. So what I would kind of call this house is, this is a hill section vista. This is hill section parking. This is hill section size of home, but it's all right in the middle of the sand section. So you're not only able to walk to the beach three, four blocks away, but you have a vista like you live in the sand or in the hill section where walking to the beach really means you got to get into your electric car right. and then go deal with parking at the beach. Right. So this is ultimately the best of, of many worlds right here in Manhattan Beach. It really is. I want to talk just briefly about this upper level that we're sitting in, right? There's, first of all, I stopped counting how many living spaces you, you have as opportunities in this home, because you have two here. You've got the lower level, you got the beach level, um, you got outdoors. Um, but this upper floor really came to, came, this upper level really came together really well. You oriented the kitchen on this side. Was there a reason for that? And tell me what you were thinking when you designed this top level. Okay, well, um, again, a, a collaboration. Pavlina and I discussed it because there's very traditional ways of doing things. I mean, for starters, um, having an upside down floor plan has become traditional in this area because you have a view. Right. Um, we pushed the envelope one step further and said, hey, where are you gonna enjoy your house? Where do you wanna be? And we got some pushback from some realtors. We got some pushback from some nosy neighbors. We got plenty of pushback. Um, but we chose to put the kitchen in the perfect spot of the house because inevitably, this is where you live. It is where you live. And, and if this is where you're gonna live, this is a place where we should certainly live to the fullest. So we not only have a pass-through window right to the deck, we have big accordion doors right to the deck. This kitchen level is 21 inches lower than the level behind me. So when we're amongst a party of 50 or 60, everyone on the upper level has the exact same ocean view that we do on this level. So it was really designed because Pavlina really in her heart of hearts is an entertainer and she wanted this home to be useful for lots of people whether they were to stay here for long periods of time or just come in for an event amazing great job on the floor plan it really is it flows so nice i mean having six thousand square feet you still as big as that is you still feel that you're intimately involved in each location it's really well, well done thank you again I, I like to design a house with quadrants because if there's quadrants, each quadrant is totally self-sufficient and, and it can be enjoyed for what it is. And then when you go from that quadrant to another quadrant, there's always a fairly large, um, I wouldn't want to say hallway, but a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, a, vest, a, a vestibule. Right. So like as you come up the stairs between the master quadrant and the kids wing, there's that nice big vestibule. So it creates a, a lot of space. On the downstairs, you have that huge beach room, totally self-sufficient, 
on its own. Yeah. On the basement level, you could store guests for months and not even know they're there. Right. So I like to design homes in quadrants for just that reason. Hopefully we're not storing the guests, we're actually enjoying their visitation. Maybe we would be storing our older children because it's sometimes uh, the further away they are, the more I love them. Yeah. Um, so one thing that struck me the first time I walked through the home was the lighting, right? It seems to be pieces I haven't seen in other homes before. Where, where was the inspiration with the lighting? Well, I have to turn over the entire lighting to um, Pavlina and a gal from the lighting zone. And when we walked into the lighting zone, Pavlina was immediately directed towards this wall of lights. And it was prominently put right in front of the store because it's the finest lighting <laughs> in the store. And she spared no expense and chose lights that are striking, effective, functional, but mostly they're they add an element of life to the house. Yeah. A lot of crystal, a lot of, of dancing light movement when the lights are on. This house lit by only accent lights would be the perfect element, well, for like our party that's gonna be on Thursday night at the wine tasting. Right. We will probably have very few lights that are down lights, overhead lights, can lights, yeah. and just use all the accent lights. And I think we'll find that the house is perfectly lit. Yeah. Amazing. Now, my favorite part of the lighting is this walkway. Um, explain that. The entrance, it's just, I don't, I, you describe it, I don't even know, I have words for it. Well, it was, um, it started because I was staring at the neighbor's house for months. Right. And instead of just worrying about, well, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? And I have to solve the problem right now. Um, I just let it sit there and sort of, you know, saturate, what am I gonna do? And then I thought, well, I could do this. Well, I could do that. Oh, I could do this. And then I ended up with a small retaining wall that held up the uh, neighbor's walkway. And then when we were doing that, it dawned on me, hey, when I pour this concrete, I could put in street lamps. So I put in 10 street lamps and these were just posts. Right. And then, so I had to wire the posts and get everything done before we poured. Then we poured and so I had these 10 street lamps along the west side of the property. And then we're like, well, what are we gonna do with them? So then I had the thought in my mind and it just evolved into this and into this. And simplicity, of course, won because if you have 10 of something and they're only like five or six right. feet apart, you better make it very simple so that it is not overwhelming. So we ended up with 12 inch spheres. We ended up with 12 volt lamps that are 30 watts each. So now we have a glowing walkway from the street all the way to the alley. Right. So you could actually enjoy the walkway from guests coming in with a parked car in the alleyway or from street front. It's a beautiful evening walk to walk up to that front door. I think we'll be able to capture it really well um, when the lights automatically turn on at five o'clock. Yeah. To close out, I'll leave a, a, an open-ended question. What, what would you say is your favorite element about this project? You know, I have to say, and this might not this might be dodging your question, but like all of my work, it's an ensemble. There's not one item about this house that I could say is my favorite point because there's so many things that are linked together that make the house what it is. It's, there's not one item. I mean, there's a great master bathroom. There's a great basement. There's great architectural appeal. There's great view. There's great separation of space, but everything is subtle. And if some is good, more is better is not the case. Architectural restraint, I think, is critical if you want to make something that's extremely appealing. So it's the ensemble of all of the elements that came together. It, it's an amazing collaboration. And I don't want to second class any of your projects, but truly it's my favorite project you've ever built. I'm so excited to be a part of it. 
and thanks for spending the time with me today. Thank you. You're welcome. You got it.